Another thing that we've learned from your calls and letters is that you're really interested in wildlife, attracting wildlife to your garden. Well, you don't have to live in a wild place to have wildlife. In fact, we're in the suburbs here of Kansas City at the home of Jane Leo. And Jane, over the past several years, has made what basically amounts to a private wildlife sanctuary. It's really, really wonderful. You can see that she's even attracting wildlife to her front yard. There's a ground feeder there that gets morning doves and a little bird bath on the ground and some other feeders for squirrels and other kinds of birds. When I was walking up to the front door, a little cottontail rabbit followed me up there. It was practically tame and I knew that I was at the right house. Come on with me. I think you're going to get a kick out of this. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, Court. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Great. How are You've you? got a little slice of paradise here. Well, it's nice and green. It certainly is. Have you planted things just for to attract wildlife? I have in some instances. Um, you know, it's hard to say. I'm, I can't decide whether I'm a gardener that's a birder right. or a birder that's a gardener. And I see you've got feeders and boxes everywhere in this yard, Jane. Uh, well, this is true. Um, I don't have a pond, which mm -hmm. I wanted, and I think I said to you we had a dog that was well, a pond right. sitter. Right, so you did not have a pond. So we wipe out <laughs> anything we had. And, and I'm kind of glad because it's a lot easier to maintain bird baths. So how many bird pond. baths do you have in this area? Uh, I have about seven or eight. And do you fill them every day with the hose, or do you just let the rain do it, or what? No, I fill them with the hose. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Another thing that I was uh, read about, Jane, was that if you are interested in attracting wildlife to your backyard, it's really important to think like a bird thinks. And a bird likes to be protected a lot of the time, and you need to have different levels of protection. You need to have a high canopy and a middle one and a lower one, so they have in all the different ranges they feel comfortable, and you certainly have this here. Now, I noticed when we first came in, you were fooling around with this bucket here. What's the deal with that? Well, it's for birds, particularly in migration. Uh -huh. uh, this little area, which is my micro, micro, micro forest, right. because everything in here is just happened. Huh. I mean, from bird droppings, mostly. Is We've that got, right? uh, uh, I have wild cherry, and I now have a whole host of uh, viburnums, and they're Fantastic. full of berries right now. So you're just letting the volunteers come up wherever they Oh, yeah, I just haven't. Which is wonderful, I'll tell Great. you. Great, a little slice of, your, uh, of a natural <laughs> forest. So you put this bucket over the... put the, the bucket in that. Over, over, over the uh, little bird uh -huh. bath on the, on the ground here. Well, what you do is just take the point of a knife and make a little slice. Yeah. And so that it drips. I mean, one or two drops a second. Oh, really? Or nothing, just makes a little drip. And the warblers, sparrows, you name it, anything that's on migration is attracted to this. To the sound of the dripping water. You, you can't believe the action that I have at this oh, little, I'll be darned. little thing. Well, that's a very simple way to oh, do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Rather, great. I have tried uh, the little, you know, the little fountains and things. Right. In fact, I had to dig a trench for a cable one right. time. And, but but this, this, is, this is so simple. This is so simple. That's yeah. great. Now, the other thing I notice is that in all these different feeders is that you've got different types of food in, in different types of feeders. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. And each different, are the feeders for, um, uh, to attract different birds as this well? This is true. This, okay. is, this is really what happens. For instance, this, this feeder, this one is just uh, general bird food and everything comes to that. Right. The grackles, the cardinals, right. the doves love it. In now, fact, the doves love it so much they sit in the bowl. Oh, I'll be darned. Are those peanuts? Those are peanuts. Now, who, who likes and those? And they're very, well, the meat eaters, which I call uh -huh. meat eaters, mm -hmm. like the chickadees. Of course, mm -hmm. chickadees will eat anything. Uh, the uh, woodpeckers in particular love them. And so they can get those little peanuts through oh, those yeah. whole day. Yeah. I'll be darned. And Nuthatches love that. And the next one down well, there? Well, that is a cardinal feeder specifically for cardinals. It's calibrated just for the weight of the cardinal. Oh, for crying out Anything loud. else, it shuts it down. Now, I notice you've got lots of guards here now. Is that to keep that's the... A, that's a, a, ba a baffle for squirrels. For squirrels. But now, you've come to some kind of a truce with the squirrels, right? Absolutely. So you, you don't mind having the squirrels around? Oh, no, no. no. Anything that comes here that wants to eat, we feed. Great. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and in turn, they eat some of our stuff, too, I might say. Okay, so not just birds, but I see you've got some uh, butterfly feeders and some hummingbird uh, feeders. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And you've got squirrels. We have squirrels. And I noticed that there was a chipmunk on the patio here the other Was that well, right? Well, one of maybe 50 or 100. Or really? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well, they always give you something to watch. Them, oh, I'll tell you. Yes, that's right. Now, they are fun. What have you got over here? Let's go see. Jane, I uh, see this is kind of a funny looking thing. Well, it is kind of funny looking, but it's a suet feeder. Oh, a suet feeder. Okay, and this is hung upside down. Is that for a reason? Uh, I believe it's to uh, protect it from starlings. Oh, really? Because uh, if it were right side up. Starlings cannot hang on to something, their huh. talons aren't strong enough, right. and so they have a tendency to fall off. Well, that's great. So what, what birds um, need well, suet? Well, um, chickadees, pit uh -huh. mice, uh, woodpeckers. 
So a, uh, a lot of different oh, birds yeah, meet. Oh yeah, now robins, I don't think eat that. They, I've never seen a robin at a soot feeder. But it's it's uh, as important in the wintertime, or even more important in the wintertime, to have yes. some suet, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah. As you said, but for, but you put out out year year round. Yeah, yeah. Huh. for energy. For Great. Their, yeah. Great. Yeah. And then over here, these wow. are um, mainly for finch. Uh, finches, uh -huh. which would include the sparrows, right. and uh, and a lot of your winter birds. Now, is there a special food in there? Yes, these are both finch mixes. Uh huh. And it's mostly sunflower chips uh -huh. and uh, niger. And, and little uh, teeny holes in this I one. I know it. I so know. That's, that, yeah. they, that's what they want. Well, that's what they're getting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Now, it okay. depends. Um, most of the finches are, are small birds, and the chickadees love it. And of course, they have small beaks, and the tit mice eat it. And, and didn't you say that some uh, woodpeckers even come? Oh, the them? woodpeckers love it. Yeah. Right. Now the bigger ones can't. Yeah. We had a red belly on here the other day, and, and it was having a hard time with it. Trying, but with no trying, success. Trying, but the downies love it. Wow, that's great. And in fact, the other day I had five species on the feeder and above, no waiting fooling. for their turn. Uh -huh. Wow. Goldfinch, house finch, downy. Had two downies. <laughs> Chickadee on the top and a white-breasted nuthatch that's, trying to get into the fantastic. action. That's fantastic. Now you've got special feeders with special food, and I was wondering, do you do, do you plant special plants to try to attract? Um, uh, yes, I do. Uh -huh. Right, with with success. Yes, Great. I think so. Shall we'll we take, take a, a look, look and Why see. Not? Jane, we're coming into one of the few little sunny patches you've got here in your backyard. Uh, I fight for sun. Yeah, I really I can tell. fight for sun. As the garden has matured, yeah. and I'm sure this is a problem for a lot of people. There are lots of ways you can go on that, but for purposes of birds, this kind of thing, you do need some sun. Yeah, to and butterflies too. And right? butterflies, that's right. Because uh, without sun, the butterflies really don't. Yeah, and I've seen around. a marked decrease yeah. in the amount of uh, butterfly business we're doing. Although yesterday I had uh, fritillary and uh, uh, monarchs here for Great. the first time this Great. year. Now I see you've, you've got some hollies planted up there. Now I know that the birds like those. Oh, they uh, do. The, ro the robins love them. The robins will come in, and about the time the hollies are ripe, the robins are getting ready to migrate right, south. Right, right. And that tree will be filled with robins. I bet it will. And, and then the uh, budley, the butterfly bush. Uh, the butterfly bushes are wonderful for both hummingbirds and butterflies. Hummingbirds right. will try to get something out of them. And then the purple coneflower. I save them and I grow them for the seeds. Chickadees and tit mice in particular, and, and uh, finches, goldfinch love I'll them too. I'll be darned, great. And uh, so I just leave them up and they'll be feasting on them most of the winter. Wonderful, and then what's that white one back in the back there? That's Agastache. Oh, sure, right. And um, now hummingbirds like hummingbirds, that? Hummingbirds, yes. Uh, huh. Hummingbirds like it, and I've seen a butterfly or two. I'll tell you what, love it, are bumblebees. Oh, God, is that right? I have a lot of bumblebees, no honeybees. Huh. Absolutely no honeybees. I haven't seen one in about three years. Wow. Now you told me that you had a list going that you've been keeping on, on all the birds that you've seen in your backyard and over your backyard, That's right? That's right, yeah. And I claim the airspace. You claim the airspace. I certainly Good. do. Well, now, let me show you. On my list, I have 115 separate species. 115 different species. That's, that's over a period of years, you wow, understand. Wow, that's incredible. Um, in the beginning, of course, because this was farmland mm -hmm. and this was pasture, we were getting uh, Metal lark. We uh -huh. were getting quail. Right. Had quail cubbies walk across the compost heap. Oh, no one man, would ever believe great. it, but they yeah. used to. Huh. Um, and then as the trees have gotten larger, then we've gotten more into uh, the, the mature woods type of thing. Right. Uh, did you say that you've had even hawks come in? Here? I've had. I think we've had seven species of hawks seen wow, in this yard. Seven yeah. species of uh -huh, hawks. Uh -huh. That's incredible. And uh, of course, uh, if you're feeding a lot, you mm -hmm. will get. Uh, either the sharp shins or the Cooper's Hawks, uh -huh. in the winter time particularly. Great. Uh, now, where does what, what someone get, now this is a pre-printed list, so you just check off what, what uh, you've seen. Everybody okay. that has an Audubon Society is going to publish them, and there are state lists that are, that are out. Do you think you'll ever get the whole thing filled up? Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to a retail establishment, an, an old one here in the Kansas City area, and it has an incredible, diverse number of bird feeders and bird feed. So we're going to yes. go take a look at that. Oh, but your good. garden has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's, Jane, well, it's, you've it's got just, a... It's just evolved. I mean, just as I say... Uh, but it's given you a lot of joy, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's different from just plain gardening. I mean, when you garden to track wildlife, it's a whole other dimension you're adding to it. And then you get to cross things off your list, right? <laughs> That's great.